Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. Today I will be unboxing and doing a pen test on a couple of paper pads that I ordered online because I have been in search of paper pads that are A5 sized with paper that is fountain pen friendly. I asked for some recommendations on a Philippine based Facebook group for fountain pens that I am a member of and these two paper pads are the ones that they mentioned although both of them come with some limitations. I understand the limitations perfectly because these paper pads are not designed specifically for use with fountain pens. That was never their purpose from what I understand. It's only that they happen to work well with fountain pens according to the experience of some people in the Facebook group. So I decided to try them out myself with my own pens because the pens and also the inks we use on paper is a big factor in the overall effect. Now I'm looking for some A5 sized paper pads, but I am also open to working with paper pads that are larger than A5 because I can always cut them down to A5 size. So these paper pads are actually not A5 sized. And May I just mention, this seller packed these paper pads very, very nicely, as you can see. The paper pads turned out to be very pristine. There were no dents at all on the sides or the corners, and none of the paper was folded or anything like that, so I highly recommend this seller. I will link them down below. Okay, so the two different kinds of paper pads that I bought were the Mica Intermediate Pad, with, with which is 200 millimeters wide by 250 millimeters tall which is a pretty weird size of course for people who are not from the Philippines but this paper pad size is what we use from the fifth grade up. This pad has 80 leaves and the paper is 52.3 GSM which I like. I like thin papers if they are fountain pen friendly. We will see. I bought two of these. And the other paper pad I bought is the Victory White Business Pad, which is pretty much the size of our Philippine long size paper, which is 8.5 by 13 inches. And the paper is 60 GSM. I also bought two pads of these just to make the shipping worth it. First, I'm going to test out the Victory White Business Pad, so I'm going to bring the camera closer for this. And the pen that I am using is the Jinhao 82 with a fine nib, and the ink is Diamine Ancient Copper. Right off the bat, I can see the feathering, and also instead of shading, where the ink pulls in some parts so those dry darker, instead of the darker lines, there are spots where the darker lines should be. I am pretty sure that I do not like this effect. It also bleeds through. So I will not be using this paper pad for myself with my fountain pens. I might use this with pencils or I might give this to my dad who uses paper pads a lot. Now we move to the Mica Intermediate Pad and I am using the same pen as before. In the close-up, as you can see, there is no feathering and there is shading and I am very happy about that. So I tried it with a different pen and ink combination. This is another Jinhao 82 with a fine nib that is inked with Ferris Wheel Press Open Sea Atrium, which is a shimmer ink. I have an ink swatching video of this ink and the others from the set and I will link that video in the description box. And there is once again beautiful shading with this ink and there is no feathering at all that I can see. However, the shimmer is not visible at all. I, I cannot see it. And that might not be the fault of the paper, which I will show you later. The next ink that I tried out is the Wearing Gill Alice, also inside yet another Jinhao 82 with a fine nib. Alice is also a shimmer ink. And I also have ink swatching videos of this and the other inks in the set, which I will also link down below. There is a teeny tiny amount of feathering, but only on the letters U and L and the capital letter F. There is shading here and it is so beautiful, 
but the shimmer is not visible. The next ink that I am trying out with the paper is the Ferris Wheel Press Queen Aleum in a Jin Hao 82 with a fine nib. This ink is also a shimmer ink, which I have also swatched on video. Link will be below. Just like the other inks before, the shimmer is not visible, but the shading is pronounced and it looks very, very beautiful. And there is also no feathering that I can see. Finally, we are going to try out the Rubber Oster Dusky Pink inside another Jin Hao 82 with a fine nib. Dusky Pink is not a shimmer ink, and the color looks very similar to the base ink color of the Queen Aleum that we swatched just above it. The Dusky Pink is just a little bit more reddish, while the Queen Aleum has a very slight bluish or purplish tint but they are both a dusky rose or an old rose color. With the dusky pink there is no feathering at all and there is shading and it's so beautiful. Now let us try to make the shimmer factor of the shimmer inks shine through. I said earlier that the lack of shimmer in the paper is not always the fault of the paper. That is because the shimmer is achieved by tiny metallic colored flecks suspended in the ink and they need to actually be moving around in the ink right before we start writing with the pen. But because we store the fountain pen in an upright position in a pen cup or a pen holder usually and it should always be nib up so the shimmer tends to settle on the bottom of the converter. So what I do is I tap the converter very gently just to move the shimmer around in the ink, make them swirl around inside the converter. And it does help if the converters are not completely full. That way we can also move the ink up and down the converter, which will help with the swirling. And then write with that immediately to get the full effect of the shimmer swirling around in the ink inside the converter so that can go through the feed, out through the nib, and onto the paper. And this time, the shimmer is there, and it looks very, very beautiful. Can you see it? So, like I said, the lack of shimmer on the earlier handwriting samples is not the fault of the paper. It's the fault of the shimmer for settling into the bottom of the converter, but they can't help it, of course. Shimmer will always settle. So the technique that I showed you is one way you can make sure that the shimmer comes out on the paper. Now let's do the same thing with the Open Sea Atrium. Tap the converter very gently, tilt the pen up and down, move the ink um, up and down the converter to make the shimmer swirl around. And then write with that immediately. The shimmer in this ink is just a little more fine than the shimmer in the previous ink, but you can see it. It's subtle, but it's visible, and it's very, very pretty. Now this technique is a little fiddly, but if you like shimmer inks and you want to enjoy them completely, this is one of the things you need to put up with. I myself am fine with it. I don't mind doing this. It takes only several seconds, but the effect is certainly worth it, in my opinion. And this one looks just beautiful. And have you noticed there is no more feathering in this second sample of the Alice ink? Now, I want to try one last shimmer ink on this paper in yet another Jin Hao 82 with a fine nib. And I am going to do that tapping technique once more. Gentle taps on the converter, tilt the pen a few times, move the ink up and down the converter, make the shimmer swirl around in the ink, and then write. This is Diamine Gold Star, and the shimmer is all there. There is not very much shading, as you can see, but the shimmer is spectacular, in my opinion. And there is no feathering. So these are all of the handwriting samples, and when we flip the paper, the back shows some ghosting, but there is no bleed through that I can see. My conclusion is the Mica Intermediate Pad is fountain pen friendly when used with fine nibs, because there is shading and there is shimmer, 
after fiddling around with the pens. And there is very, very little feathering, but only with one ink. And that even disappeared when you wrote with the same ink a second time. Some people experienced bleed through actually very bad bleed through when writing with the broader nibs and the italic nibs. But with the fine nibs that I tested them out with in this video, the paper has no bleed through. Now I'm considering making an A5 sized disc bound notebook using this paper. So I'll just have to cut it down to size. A5 is 148 millimeters wide and 210 millimeters tall. I just need to figure out where to make the cut, but I will figure that out. Now, just to cover all my bases, so to speak, I went to Hong, which is a store in my city, because my cousin Peachy said Hong has the mica intermediate pads, but they go out of stock fast. So she always buys a whole bunch of them each time when they are in stock. And when I went there, the intermediate pads were indeed out of stock, but I did get the grade 3 writing pad and two pads of the grade 4 writing pads. These are for 3rd grade and 4th grade students in elementary school. In our country, each grade in elementary school gets a different kind of pad. And just let me make some pen tests on them again. The Diamine Kelly Green has shading, but also feathers on the grade 3 pad, the one with the red and blue lines. I'm quite disappointed because Kelly Green is my favorite ink. However, with the Diamine Asian Copper, there is no feathering at all, and there is very visible shading. Very nice. And with the Robert Oster Dusky Pink, there is no feathering either, and there is very pronounced shading. It is very nice with these two inks on the grade 3 paper, but the Kelly Green, like I said, was disappointing. That is probably not the fault of the paper. The specific ink just doesn't work perfectly with the paper. When it came to the grade 4 pad, the Kelly Green also showed a tiny amount of feathering, but there is some nice shading. But with the ancient copper, it's just perfect. There is visible shading and no feathering. And the dusky pink also shows very pronounced shading and no feathering. But there is substantial bleed through with a grade 3 pad and also the same amount of bleed through with a grade 4 pad. If you do not write on the back, this should not matter. These are still decent papers that can work well with most fountain pens with fine nibs. Now the grade 4 pad is a weird size. It is the width of the A5, which is 148 millimeters, but it's only 200 millimeters tall when the A5 is 210 millimeters tall. So I cannot use this to make an A5 size notebook. I do have the Veco A5 pad in cream. This is okay. This is fine. This is very popular with fountain pen users in the Philippines. This comes in different colors, but I prefer the cream. I have been using this Veco paper in my disc bound life notebook, and I have videos about that notebook which I will link down below. But if I want to make an A5 disc bound notebook, I have no choice but to use the bigger intermediate pad here and just cut it down to the A5 size. As for these other pads, I can still use these. I like them. I can toss them into my paper stash for use whenever. I do remember that once Everything Calligraphy sent a grade 3 mica paper pad as a freebie with one of my orders of Elias paper. And I wasn't paying attention. I tossed it into my paper stash because I preferred their usual freebie, which is the chalk nut. <laughs> they always include some chalk nut with every purchase. And because chalk nut is very crumbly, they are also wrapped in bubble plastic, which I think is very, very cute. And I must say that I have never ever received a smashed chalk nut in the many years that I have been ordering from Everything Calligraphy. Chalk nut is a peanut based candy with some chocolate in it, but I can taste more of the peanut than the chocolate. Okay, I guess that is my little video for you today. 
I'm sorry if the papers I usually test out are only available in the Philippines. I feel like I need to do this kind of videos because there is actually very little choices for us here that are locally available. If we want the good papers that are designed specifically for fountain pens, we have to order them from abroad and shipping costs are usually enormous. For people in the US and UK, you are lucky you can just walk into a store and buy the paper or order from online but shipping won't be too expensive. So anyway, this chalk nut is very crumbly like I said so this mini vacuum cleaner comes in handy. I hope you found this video informative and I hope you enjoyed anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye!